everyone, this is Anne from Odulcina Scrap. Today I want to share with you a quick tutorial to create those gorgeous envelopes. And you can see inside, I've used, you know, those cereal box bags. So every time I empty a box of cereal, I'm always fascinated with the sound of those bags that I'm scrunching right now. And I've always thought there must be a way to use them in my junk journals. So these, this pile, they've been washed and dry. And I finally did my first project using them and it's the inside of my pouch envelope. And what's interesting with this size is that I can fit in a, an envelope journal in it. Sure, that one is just a cover, but we can see we have plenty of place. So it all started with a book that I have, which is like a size of a ledger papers, but they are not ledger papers. They are like you can see, they are really, really old. But these are like um, English and French. So you have the translation of everything. This is to learn English or learn French. But um, yeah, this is from the uh, Linguistic Institute of Canada uh, to learn English. So you have all, everything is translated between French and English. And we can see it's been um, written, typed with the typewriter. So I wanted to do something special with those papers. And I thought I could do an envelope because it's a big size of paper. So I'm going to use one sheet of that paper with one of the cereal box bag that I'm going to cut. So because the paper is so, because the bag is so big, I mean, I can just cut the sides and not worry that I'm going to run out of the, of the bag. I love the edge here. I might keep it and use it somewhere else. All right, so I'm gonna cut this side too. And I'm gonna just keep one. So what we want to do is we want to fold it like that about I would, I will measure with one that I've done four inches. So you want to fold it at four inches about to have a good size. And we want the letters to be on the good side, but when we'll flip it, we still have the letters on the good side. So that's good. Now this is for fragile. So I thought I could use the bag, you know, the bag would be inside, but what if we just fold it like that and it will make this flap stronger. And I love as well to have like those lines, you know, or do you see well, those lines will kind of show up and um, you could use a contrasting thread like uh, sewing with black but I'm gonna sew with uh, off-white threads so let me just go do the sewing for that and I'll come back I did a little zigzag so the zigzag mixed with the little line it's I like it uh, of course, I could trim that down maybe with a pattern. You know, those scissors that cuts um, 
with a pattern like the edge of this maybe or leave it like that or trim it shorter i'll see later for that now what i'm ready to do is to do my fold at four inches and now i'm gonna sew the whole side but i'm gonna sew on the good side to make sure that my tread is perfect because you know sometimes when i don't know for you but for me the tread tension is not as perfect at the back than the front so i'll do my sewing this way so i'm gonna sew those three those three sides like that now i have the pocket done and i'm gonna trim the excess of the bag following the paper there you go and now i can fold to the dimension i want but i want at least a a small gap here so I can glue something down let's say if I want like a, a skirt like that or for this one I just left the writing which is great too here we go we have the envelope and it's all sturdy inside it doesn't make the same noise as um as the tracing paper it's kind of different but there's still some noise you know there you go okay so now i'm gonna decorate that i bought a tool fabric that has tons of flowers in it and I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna show you how you can use like a fabric that has flowers and maybe the flowers do not fall exactly where you would like but you can still use them so I'm gonna trim a portion of it to show you so I don't have all of that on my table so first I need to decide if I want a little piece of paper. So let me show you that quickly. That bicycle, this is a digital that is for a freebie for all of you. So my next video will be this freebie to celebrate my 2,500 subscribers on YouTube. So I'm going to use another portion of that freebie just to give you <laughs> the idea of what's coming. I'm going to use those uh, pink stripes with everything there you have. So I'm going to tear. So stay tuned. You're going to get this freebie soon I'm just not completely ready yet I need to finish a portion of the digital and I'm gonna do this and maybe just a little stripe like that uh, maybe a bit too big just remove more because I want I want to see some of the typewriter 
Okay, what about that? This this looks good, and I want to see. I'll tear the edges so we can see the thread here, the zigzag. I love it. What about something like that? Yes, I like it. It's just kind of a base. Maybe I can put it this way instead. Because the polka dot won't show that much. Yeah, I want the polka dot there. So let me just remove. I love the scotch tape here. But for today, we won't see it. That's okay. It's a printable, so we can print it over and over and over. And that's what I love about digitals. If you like a, a pattern, you like a design, you'll never run out of it. And you can print on different type of paper, vellum, cardstock, off-white paper, yellowish paper, white paper, coffee stain paper and you will have different look with the same digital actually so i'm gonna glue this down first and i've started uh, gluing just the sides it's a little bit more puffy and I, I just like that and it holds as well. And I use less glue. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit now. Okay, so what do we want? First, I'm gonna start with looking at my flower. Maybe it falls perfectly right away like I have a small and a big flower yeah i could leave them there but these here are not okay so let me trim and i'm gonna remove everything else what about something like that or maybe yeah, no, I prefer this. Something like that. And now I can add the, the other one later. But now I want something more fluffy at the back. So it can be like a lace, a portion of a lace. Oh, I like that actually. Or it could have been, let me show you, it could have been some um, cheesecloth. Let me show you with an example. Like here. Like here, this one. This is cheesecloth. And while I've been gluing the flowers, I created some folds. So it can be cheesecloth. It can be lace, it can be fabric. I'm going to use the lace today just to make it, just to be different. Looking at the good side. Okay, so if I want my bigger flower there, I just need to trim, make sure I'm not perfectly stri straight. I tend to, to pull my scissors on the sides at the same time that I cut and it creates, it helps a little bit, I find. So I can have, I can have my fabric maybe like that and I'm going to try the other side. Hmm. about that that works for me 
okay now i'm gonna see if i want to add i i love those little leaves there so i'm gonna i'm gonna use them so i'll just cut them apart and this trick works for any applique that you have to you can trim them and re-glue them together kind of Okay, so something here or here. I think I love this one there. This one could be somewhere. You know what, I'm gonna split those two flowers. So I can really manipulate them however I want. Like that. Like that and maybe use this, this big leaf. Here. Okay, how about that? I like it. Okay, so now I can still add a little bit of cheesecloth just to add some dimension, but I'm gonna glue those first and add the cheesecloth at the back of the leaves. So I'm gonna use my art glue and just glue in the middle, not the whole thing just to secure all of that and make sure it doesn't move. So at the same time, it's gluing my lace. And for the little leaves here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tiny bit of glue. And while, oh, where is my spatula? Okay, I'm, I can find my spatula. I'm gonna use my scissors just to create the fold before it dries out. See, you can always figure out. Okay, my spatula is right here. And I'm gonna do the same for this one. Put some glue. And with the spatula, you kind of create additional folds like that. I'll do it with this one too. Just a little fold so they don't look too, they need to look messy, shabby chic. There you go. Look at the leaves. So we're gonna do the same with this one too. So I'm gonna do, put some glue. You don't need that much. And while it's drying, I'm creating folds. You see? Look at the difference. Okay, I will do that with the leaves there, but before gluing them down, I'm gonna add a little bit of cheesecloth and maybe some laces. So, could be the cheesecloth here. I'm gonna damage it a little bit on the sides. And let's see if I bring that here, how it looks. Something like that. I wonder if you see well. Let me change the angle and maybe be like that. So without and 
end with. And I'm going to create folds. So it, it adds some dimensions. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do one section at a time. So adding a little bit of glue here. And with the spatula, I'm going to create some folds. And... And same here. All right. You see, we have more dimension. So I'm going to do the same because I, I don't want some just there so i'm gonna add a little bit here as well maybe a smaller piece like that adding some glue putting the fabric the cheesecloth creating some folds There you go. And now I can maybe glue this leaf with a little bit of folds as well. So I'm going to glue it down over the cheesecloth with a little bit of folds. Same for here. Yeah, I should put some cheesecloth too. Let me trim a little piece of cheesecloth. And... Let me add it here. I'm going to put some glue. Create my folds. And now I'm going to glue my leaves with a little bit of folds too. This is to add the dimension and so they are not so flat because they're too perfect, too perfect. So even here I can create more folds. I'm just adding some glue, I hold it down and then when I release I have new folds. Like this, I'm going to add a little bit of glue to hold this one down, that kind of tool. Part of the flower all right this is how it looks isn't it great I love it so tone on tone colors eh for the inside what I love to do is sometimes just add and I could have sewn it before. I guess I should have. But for today, it's going to be just that. Look at this. It has like polka dots. I'm going to put some glue on top of the zigzag so it will hold well. And apply a good tension on it. And put some glue on the other side on the zigzag thread and glue it like that this way it's going to be kind of fluffy with a good tension so look at that and we can see the zigzag we can see the lines of the bag and it's gorgeous so okay we're just missing something here with the flap so i'm gonna and maybe a little bow so i'm gonna look for a lace ok 
Okay, I like it that way, but I can add something here and I thought I could add maybe a little piece of fabric doily. I have this leftover and I think if I glue it down somewhere, not sure what I want, but something like that, that we can see peeking through and from the inside, it's good too. Yeah, maybe something like that. I'm gonna cut this one. What about something like that? and I can glue it on the sari silk and on the envelope actually, yeah. I can use regular glue too. There you go. So I ended up gluing this with a mix of the art glitter glue for the fabric on the paper. And when I was fabric on fabric for this part here, I've, I've used the art glue or it could have been fabric tack. It holds wet, bit better than the glitter art, art glue I find. So we have a pocket. And it looks like that. And I think I'm going to add a little bow. I just can't resist. So let me create a little bow here. Oops. And I'm not sure where I want it, but yeah, here would be great. There you go. That is the envelope. So I hope you enjoyed watching the process and and maybe try to use your cereal bag <laughs> like I did. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.